There are still close to a billion people in this world who have little to no access to electricity. The vast majority of them in Africa, in South and Southeast Asia. But what does life without electricity even look like? For most of us, it's unimaginable. How would we feed our family without being able to keep food in a fridge? Do work without computers, other tools? Stay safe, healthy, connected? Everything comes to a halt without electricity. But for one in eight people in this world, that is still a reality. Now, the good news is there are some really interesting and exciting innovations in the works as we speak. And the surprising news is that it's not the Silicon Valley or China who's accelerating that forward. It's countries like Nigeria. Nigeria is the most progressive and innovative place when it comes to large-scale solutions to energy poverty. So what is the secret? Well, first, I want to go back about 10 years. At this point, there are two main solutions to get energy to rural communities, mini-grids and solar home systems. Now, around this time, we also have some really big wins. Solar panels and batteries are dropping in price. They've come down 90% compared to decades before. And still, communities are not getting access to electricity fast enough. Well, it turns out there are some challenges with these technologies. Mini-grids. You install a centralized array of panels and batteries and then send the electricity out to the community. This is great for high amounts of power, but they're slow to build. And that distribution, those cables, those poles, can often make the whole project just too expensive. On the other hand, we have solar home systems. Now, they're super easy, flexible, um, you install them on an individual household, but did, they don't provide a robust and scalable electrification solution. But these feel like technical challenges that we could solve. And that's what we, a group of engineers, set out to do. What could we build that could take the benefits of both solar home systems and mini-grids, bring them together, and solve their challenges at the same time? What we came up with is the mesh grid. Now, a mesh grid is a fully decentralized network. The panels, the batteries, they're all installed on individual houses. So there's nothing centralized like in a mini grid. And then they're interconnected into a fully modular, flexible grid, kind of like Legos. And as the houses are interconnected, they start redistributing power, taking excess to where it's needed most. But because we're only sending power shorter distances, to neighboring households. We can use smaller cables and really bring down the cost. And as a result, the mesh grid can come out 50% cheaper than mini grids on average. They're also fast to deploy. You can train the local labor to install and maintain them because they're a safe and simplified infrastructure. Okay, so back in our office, which was also our home, in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, we were so excited when these first mesh grid prototypes started working. Soon after, we got on motorbikes and boats and bumpy roads and got out to communities, floating villages, to test this idea. Could it work? And when it did, we could see the gap that this technology was going to start filling. Everyone was excited. Customers were excited. I was thrilled. Mesh grids are designed for these communities. They're hard to reach, they're less dense, they're fewer than 1,000 households, and they make up 90% of off-grid communities. So surely at this point, we are at the cusp of massive scale. However, <laughs> energy is one of the most regulated and monopolized industries. This means, in all of these countries with energy challenges, the utility is actually the government. And that means nobody can enter. And this blocks innovation. But one market changed everything. Nigeria. 80 million people still off-grid, but Nigeria has started to do things differently when it comes to electrification. They're not trying to just copy America, Europe, 
do things old ways with old solutions. Instead, we have regulators who are working around the clock to learn about new solutions. They have even sat in broken down cars along treacherous roads for hours to get out to communities to see mesh grids firsthand. And ultimately, they're doing what it takes to ensure that their policy unlocks the right innovations to get energy access to their communities. Honestly, this type of high-level, top-down change that we all know is required but always feels impossible. So many stakeholders, interconnected um, incentives. But Nigeria is giving me hope because in addition to the regulators, we also have financiers, like InfraCredit, who are ready to back innovations like mesh grids. And we have the right partnerships in the ecosystem. Affirmash, trying to get the right appliances into communities, which will actually unlock opportunities when communities get electricity for the very first time. And of course, the energy companies themselves, Nigerian owned and run, who are committed to making rural electrification, which is a very hard business, a long-term and sustainable option. And in addition to all this, we now have the launch of DARES, the world's largest electrification program, close to a billion dollars, set to get almost 20 million Nigerians access to electricity with mesh grids included. Now, this is a country that is not afraid to invest in new solutions to finally solve old problems. And it turns out, when your policy starts backing innovation, the results are transformational. As of now, 40,000 people are getting access to electricity from mesh grids. But it's not the electricity that we care most about. It's the opportunities that are unlocked. Danjuma opened a barbershop. He's a very popular guy in town now. Faith opened a restaurant powered entirely by clean cooking appliances. And we hear that the rice from those rice cookers have even gotten village approval, which is, which is a high bar. <laughs> and um, Happy charges dozens of phones and devices for her community every day. Now, these are the stories that remind us why we started on this mission in the first place. From 40,000, we're already set to see 500,000 people get access to electricity from mesh grids in the next few years alone. This is truly just the beginning. It's time for us globally to look to Nigeria as an example. Technology, finance, regulation can all come together at new scales, and we can see innovation thrive. I do believe we can get 700 million people access to electricity, but it's going to take the brightest minds and a true willingness to do things differently. <laughs>